Mother wrote a lot of plays, and um, always in her mind was the fact that she was adopted. And her father, uh, Grandpa Hudson, was a very interesting man. He was a very strict Englishman and, uh, and really uh, kept her under his thumb as much as he could. However, Mother um, was not one to be kept under a thumb for very long. She had a great spirit about her. When I grew up, I didn't know uh, or, or pay much attention to the fact that my mother was adopted. When I did find out, of course I was kind of interested a little bit, and as I got older, a little bit more interested, and I wanted to know. Um, I, wa I was very curious as to knowing, Jill, well, I wonder who her parents were. Um, from a very young age, we all learned to act. We had to. You've, all, you've heard my other siblings say what our father said. If we lived on a farm, we'd milk the cows. We're in theater, you will be in the plays. Um, we always loved it. We really did. It was a, a wonderful family time. I uh, remember my mother uh, sitting at the table much of her life with a pen in one hand and some fresh uh, cut carrots or something in her other as she would write her plays. And from the time I was very, very small, I can picture my mother sitting there with her head trying to think and, and writing her plays. And then later on, um, after I was married and all, I typed many of her scripts, which was delightful because I couldn't put it down. I couldn't stop. I just wanted to see what was coming next. When I was growing up, we all knew that Grandma was adopted. Um, she wrote this play about being adopted and, and about how she had this grand idea that her biological mother must have been a famous actress because she had the acting bug so bad. And I can remember one year uh, in the back seat of the car, Mother telling us, and I must have been young because you know we spoke of it often during our growing up years, but uh, she told us the story of learning that she was adopted. And oh my goodness, I was just bawling in the back seat with mother telling this story about her hearing about it and um, running away for a while and, and uh, just the whole, the whole story. I think we always wanted to know who grandma's parents were. Um, it, it was just such a mystery because it was so clear that grandma came from something vibrant. <laughs> I didn't know that Ruth was adopted. I had no idea. And this is about 2014, about 20, 2014, 2015. And DNA research had just started going and getting uh, Ancestry DNA was was uh, up and going. And I said, you know, you guys should take a DNA test and we could, could figure this out. So you have Nathan Hale's family and Nathan and Ruth um, are from Utah, like I said, and Nathan's family has very strong Mormon pioneer stock in his DNA. <laughs> so we were concerned of how are we going to parse out the matches for Nathan's side of the family? Because again, we only were working with the children of Ruth and Nathan, not Ruth herself. So we had to divide up which of the matches were Nathan's side and which were Ruth's side. And we just kept finding hails, 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 and more hails. <laughs> Yeah, so we discovered a surprise. So we, again, waiting for all these results to come in, we did find a, a DNA match that didn't seem to match the Hale side. So the match that we found was a second cousin match to Phil and Cody and Tanny and all of that group. Second cousin match on Grandma Hale's side, on Ruth's side. We're just like, ah. So then we call, you know, we get in touch with her via messaging and find out her mother was adopted. So everything <laughs> just kind of died right there. It's like, oh, she's adopted too. So oh, we were frustrated with that, but we, we knew that we had to continue on that line to see what we could find, to see what other matches we could, what other clusters we could find with Grace, with Grace's daughter um, to discover. So here you, it's a unique situation. We had Ruth and we had Grace. Neither of them had taken a test. Both had passed away. And we had the chi their children is who we were using to to uh, get these clusters and try to figure it out. And the math so of the was... DNA, the math of the DNA was telling us that it was very likely that that what was the relationship between Ruth and Grace? Yeah, so it was very likely that Grace was a half sister to Ruth, which blew our mind. We were just like, yeah. wait a minute, 
So then we took the shared matches between the children and grandchildren of Grace that had tested and the children and grandchildren of Ruth that had tested. And we looked yeah. at the shared matches with all of them. And ultimately, we ended up with two families or two surnames that we were working with in these two unique clusters of DNA matches for the families of Ruth and Grace. So we had this cluster of singletons who were all over the map, right? Yes, um, yes. And then we had this cluster. The other surname that we had was a cluster of people with the last name of Blackburn. Uh, and the problem with the Blackburns was that not only were there not a whole lot of them, we were working with just a few and they were fourth cousins, yeah. but they were all in the Southern United States. Yep. And the problem was we've got this family all over the globe, everywhere but Utah and a family in the Southern United States. And we have these two women who were born in Salt Lake City. Yes. And so we had to try to find, you know, how do you get the people in the right place at the right time? Then we started digging into one of my favorite resources, which is newspapers.com. Absolutely. That's like, we find the best stories in newspapers. You can't do in family history without newspapers. You just, yep. and uh, so, yeah. So yeah, that challenge was that we had this family all over the world, but we didn't have anybody in Utah until we struck gold in newspapers and discovered that this whole Singleton family in Texas actually had a Utah connection. Yeah, so so we found two different, uh, you found a, a really long article, and I found a really short little thing that talked about a singleton in Utah. And I was like, there's a singleton in Utah. I mean, I don't know, I just freaked out, could not believe it. There's a singleton in Utah. I found him in the city directories in, in Salt Lake. And they were only there for in the city directories for like two years or three yeah. years. And it was really strange. Edwin Singleton, he was in Salt Lake City. And he was in Salt Lake City during the year ranges that Ruth was born. Yeah, and I remember for a little while we thought, well, then, you know, we considered that Edwin might be the father of Ruth and Grace. Mm -hmm. But the challenge was that we had that took care of the Singleton cluster, but we had this other cluster of, of people, the Blackburn family, down in the southern United States. And Edwin's parents were both immigrants from England. So uh, we knew that he didn't connect with the Blackburn family in, you know, through his parents. And so we still had this huge question that we had to solve. So we had the singleton thing and we had all this information and we were looking at the family. And uh, I found an article in the Salt Lake paper about Edwin and his wife and they had a daughter um, and the daughter was, you know, it's, it's kind of the Facebook of its time where like they're traveling to visit family, you know, those kind of things. But I remember very distinctly, you said, I, there's something about these Blackburns. We've got to figure this out. This is an important thing. So uh, we were researching and the Singleton family and his wife, Edwin Singleton's wife was Sydney Ellen Smith. And I'm like, oh, she's a Smith. She's not a Blackbird. Black <laughs> I was so upset. And I'm like, of course, she's a Smith, right? It can be something unique. It's a Smith. So I was doing the tree work and doing Sydney Ellen Smith's tree. And sure enough, we found that Sydney Ellen Smith's mother was a Blackbird. And I, again, will never forget. I'm like, Krista, <laughs> we have a blackbird. And we're just like, oh my gosh. Again, we're like, what does this mean? What does this mean? And um, so we looked at Sydney Ellen Smith and Edwin Singleton. They married. They had one child named Lucille Singleton. That person I talked about was in all the little papers traveling with her family. And she was 17 at the time of Ruth's birth. So again, it's one of those moments I will never forget. We just stared at each other, you and I, across her cubicles from each other and just said, did we just solve this? One of the things that I loved is that after we had made that connection, right? So we had figured out that Edwin had married Sydney and that Sydney's grand grandparents were Blackburns. And then we found Lucille's death certificate. And right on her death certificate, it showed that her middle name was actually Blackburn. <laughs> Yes. So she had been raised as Lucille Blackburn Singleton. And those were the two names that we'd been looking for all along. And I feel like we found someone who had been waiting to be found. Uh, started researching Lucille and found some pretty amazing articles. Like beyond the quote Facebook trips to see the family articles. Uh, once we knew her name, we could do that research. And we found some great articles that took us to New York City. For whatever reason, it's just knowing knowing where your your people come from, where your story originated, 
it just fills in a gap some somehow um i guess for me anyway part of it was the theater part of it was grandma's energy part of it was that i was very close to grandma hale um and and the stories that come with it and already <laughs> the stories that arrived with our information about who who grandma's biological mom was are incredible and you know sort of beyond my my wildest imaginings of what what the, the answer might have been just just crazy and amazing so let's just make sure we've got this timeline straight so that we can keep track of all of this right so we've got this girl she is born actually we found out on an indian reservation in montana in 1891 her father is uh, into mining the family's traveling all over the place by the time she's a young teenager she's in salt lake with her father and she has uh, a child in 1907 in the fall then ruth is born in 1908 in the fall and then her mother whisks her off to New York City to go to a girls' school. Her mother passes away. She's there in New York City alone, leaves the school. Her father is still traveling the country on business. So here we have this young, fairly young teenager in New York City by herself. With and money. <laughs> with money, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, pursuing a career in music. And then in 1913, by the time she's about 21 or 22 years old, that's when she gets involved in this huge scandal. She's a definition of the socialite crowd, right? I mean, it's just probably amongst, amongst all of those young people with money. That's where she gets caught up with a young man who's a nephew of a Vanderbilt. They got into a car accident. What was even more interesting to the story is it described who she was in New York City. So you remember how she wanted to go study music? Well, that music turned into a very particular kind of music called the Ziegfeld Follies. So you have Lucille Singleton, who was a Ziegfeld Follies girl or a dancer uh, in New York. I believe they're at the Amsterdam Theater and performing. My favorite article, I think of all, is the one that did a sketch of Lucille. And Lucille's stage name was Lulu Betty, <laughs> which is just fantastic. Yeah. So Lulu Betty Singleton, and um, they did a sketch of her, what she looked like. And when I saw that photo, I saw Ruth. I saw Ruth. The interesting thing to me about it is that when she wrote Thank You Papa, she wrote her mother as very similar to what Lulu was. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting with the information that we've recently received about who her actual mother was, and then comparing that to the plot line in Thank You Papa, uh, she finds out she's adopted and then she finds out that her mother is a famous actress and it's like anyway that's uh, really too close for comfort in fact as soon as we heard that we kind of went uh i wonder what she knew i wonder what somebody must have told her something i mean i don't know I, you, you kind of think that she had to have known something either that or she was just extremely inspired when she wrote it and uh and nailed it just thought about about the fact that mother uh, was such a uh, interesting individual and so uh, interested in theater and was so outgoing and that and we said well no no wonder because Lulu was like that so as far as uh, Lucille goes uh, who would be my grandmother um, I don't know what to think about Lucille except that I'm so grateful for her, for having, I mean, giving birth to my mother. And um, I, I also love her for her, um, for how much I think my mother was like her. Um, both loving to entertain and to be on the stage and to do those things, you think, my goodness, of course there's DNA there. And uh, so that was, that was really fun to learn that that part of the story. Um, I'd love to have known her. I would love to have known her. 
their legacy has just filled, filtered down through the whole family. And it's, it's really been uh, rather a, an unusual situation, I think. It seemed cosmic. It seemed impossible. It was like, it seemed like it was, it could have been a prank that someone was playing on us because we're this theater family with a, with this crazy theater grandma who always dreamed that her biological mom was, was a famous actress. <laughs> I'm getting emotional again. Every time I talk about it, I get emotional, but then to have you guys reveal that her mother danced in the Ziegfeld Follies in New York city, a mile from where I live. It's, it was just crazy and it seemed impossible. And it was, it was just awesome. <laughs>